Hi, everybody. It's Dr. K from Holistic Minds. Last time we talked about the HSPs, the highly sensitive person or the highly sensitive child. And we talked about what are some of the factors that cause these individuals to go haywire. Last time it was more of a focus around how our brain processes information from the environment around us and how that processing could be flawed to cause us to suffer. And this, this is the part that I want to talk about. This is the part that gets me going because, you know, it, we normalize too many things and we just say, well, that's just how it is. This, this, this person is as they are. You know, Susie is the way they are. Susie just doesn't want to go play in the playground. Susie's the indoor kid. Susie's the quiet kid. And guess what? Susie's grow up to become adults that continue to have the same difficulties in life. They can't go into places where they can socialize. They're limited in their ability to go out into the world. They're limited in their ability to live life. And if this was 40 years ago, we would just be able to normalize things. And that's all we could do, right? All we could do is normalize, well, this is how the person is because that's just how they are. If we did that today, it would be an excuse. And it's not to make any of this wrong. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Don't get me wrong about this because it's okay to be highly sensitive. I'm highly sensitive. And for people who can function and do well and enjoy their lives, it's perfect. And they do have richer lives internally. They do notice more and they create more for the world. And that's awesome. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the people that suffer. And that's why I do what I do. This is what Holistic Minds is about. It's to relieve suffering. Because there's way too many people that are suffering. And it may be you, it may be your child, it may be someone you know. And that's why I want you to share this information with other people. Because there's too many people suffering and we're normalizing that suffering because we don't know what else to call it. We don't know what else to do with it. And in the 21st century, that does not need to happen. So last time we talked about how occupational therapists, vision therapists, auditory therapists, other people can work miracles on rewiring how we process information. And I have interviews from these over-the-top gifted people who literally change the lives of people every day. And you need to hear their stories. If, if you go to the Holistic Minds, you register, all their videos are free for you to watch. Today, what I want to talk to you about is brain chemistry. Because it's not just how we're wired that influences how sensitive we are to the world. In addition to that, our chemistry, our brain chemistry, can influence how we experience the world. And the cool thing is through genetics, we can actually understand what this brain chemistry is about. We can understand the function of the enzymes that ultimately influence the brain chemistry that creates this state of hyperarousal and most importantly, most importantly, there are things we can do to change the brain chemistry. So this notion of genetics is your destiny. And if whatever genes you have, you're basically just fill in the blank, is not true. Through supplementation, vitamins, herbs, mostly vitamins, we can actually change the functioning of the enzymes that may be flawed to actually balance the brain chemistry and help people function more easily, more uh, comfortably. And that's what I want to talk to you about. So we basically have four chemicals in our brain that cause a state of arousal. There's epinephrine, norepinephrine. We'll generically call that adrenaline. And adrenaline is one of the primary things that causes us to be aroused or alert. Why do we drink coffee? What does coffee do to us? It actually jacks up our adrenaline levels. It creates more adrenaline to some extent, another hormone called or a chemical called dopamine. But coffee boosts our catecholamines, our adrenaline, which then causes us to feel more alert, more aware, less sleepy. And there's some of you who, when you drink coffee, you start getting palpitations, you start feeling agitated jittery, or you may know of someone that has that experience. What is that about? Well, if you naturally can't break down adrenaline because our brain makes adrenaline, 
It makes all the four hormones. So adrenaline, dopamine, and glutamate, I'll just tell you about all of them, but right now we're focusing on adrenaline. Our brain makes these chemicals and breaks them down, makes the chemicals, breaks them down. And it constantly is adjusting these chemicals for the different time of day, right? If, if you had catecholamines, if you had a lot of adrenaline at night, guess what? You're not falling asleep. That's why when you drink, or at least when I drink coffee too late in the day, past two o'clock, I can't sleep because I have way too much adrenaline in my brain. For some people, and I'm one of them, we have mutations in certain enzymes that should be breaking down adrenaline, and it's called COMT, at least for me, catecholamine M transferase, and there's another one called MAO, M-A-O, monoimmune oxidase. And either of these enzymes, if they're defective because of mutations, they're too slow in breaking down these chemicals. So it basically causes a backup. It causes an excess buildup of adrenaline or dopamine, which then causes this state of hyperarousal. For dopamine, the way to contextualize what dopamine is, uh, is basically what Ritalin or Adderall do. When, when kids uh, or whoever takes Adderall or Ritalin, what does it do? It jacks up dopamine levels and secondarily, the catecholamines, the adrenaline, but primarily dopamine is what goes up. And that's why kids can be up for hours studying at a time because they have ways, we have a lot of dopamine. For other people, they actually have too much dopamine. And you know, if they take something like Adderall, they may start feeling anxious or not feeling well because their levels have gone too, up, too high. There's another chemical in our brain, and that's called glutamate. So we talked about the adrenalines, we talked about dopamine, and now we're talking about glutamate. Glutamate is something that we don't talk about very much, we don't hear about very much, but it's actually one of the most stimulating compounds in our brain. The funny thing is glutamate actually gets converted to GABA. You've probably heard of GABA. Some of you probably take GABA. When we take magnesium, what magnesium does that helps us chill out and help us sleep better is it actually activates the GABA receptors in our brain, which then helps us suddenly be like, oh, because the GABA kicks in in its effect and allows us to relax. Glutamate through this enzyme called GAD. Glutamate through this enzyme called GAD Glutamate, through this enzyme called GAD, glutamate decarboxylase, gets converted to GABA. So if you have a mutation in GAD, and I've got a tiny mutation in my GAD, you actually can't convert glutamate to GABA as easily, so your accelerator is stuck, and your braking system actually doesn't work. And GABA is the primary braking system in the brain. It actually activates us to calm down and go to sleep. Again, that's what magnesium does. So if you have a mutation in any of these enzymes, and there's a whole lot more to this, I'm way oversimplifying this. Don't, don't, don't think that these four enzymes are it. There's a lot more to these pathways and a lot of other things in the periphery, but I'm just simplifying this for the sake of this conversation. If you have a mutation in any of these enzymes or several of these enzymes, you could end up with way too much of these hyperexcitatory chemicals. And what does that do? What is the definition of the HSP, the highly sensitive person? We're more alert. We take in more of the world. We tend to notice more. Think, think, look, look at the definition that is there and then look at what these chemicals do. And you're like, oh my God, yeah. The thing that's really fun for me is as a general pediatrician, so I'm the consultant that, that helps these children that are suffering tremendously. And I'm also a pediatrician for a handful of kids. I love seeing the newborns, and there are some of these newborns that literally, when they're a day or two old, they're, you know, their eyes are wide awake, and you're like, whoa, little dude, like, you're a day old, you should be sleeping, and they're not sleeping, they're just, and then when you watch them over time, or when I watch them over time, these are also the kids that end up napping less, so they're the one and a half year old that nap maybe like two hours a day, and they're fine. They end up sleeping less at night. And if you watch them even longer, they end up becoming the teenagers that ultimately need less sleep and they, they can function 
you know, well with little sleep. So these are all little things when you watch really carefully, all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, yeah, it's there. And the coolest part is, the coolest part is we can do something about it. So B6, magnesium, various other B vitamins. There's a host of different things. And this, this, this video is not to get into all of that. Holistic Minds has that information. So if you, you're really interested, go register on the website. We either have or will have tons of videos coming. If we don't already have it, they get into all of these different things and experts will be talking about these things. But these are compounds that can change literally the functioning of these enzymes. And if they're too slow to break things down, you, you pump in enough of the vitamin, it basically supercharges. It's like putting rocket fuel into your car that's broken down. And all of a sudden, your car that could barely go 35 miles an hour is now hitting 85. Put 100 octane gasoline in a beat up old car and see how much better it does. The vitamins help these enzymes work more efficiently, which then breaks down these excitatory chemicals, which then allows the brain chemistry to normalize. There's one thing I really do want to talk about, though, one, one mineral, actually, and that's lithium. You may be thinking like, wait, 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 why are you talking about lithium? Because lithium is the compound for crazy people, right? And that's true. In 2,000 milligram doses, in 1,500 milligram doses, it's a medication they use for the psychotic, for bipolar people. In one milligram doses, in five milligram doses, it is a critical, critical mineral that we need for normal functioning here and throughout our entire system. And there's a lot of talk about how one in three people are deficient in magnesium. Guess what? There's a certain population, we don't know the exact amount, that's deficient in lithium. And for instance, if you drink reverse osmosis water, if you drink purified water like Dasani, which is reverse osmosis, all the minerals have been stripped out of that water. And if you go look, they have not added lithium back. In certain water supplies, like in Texas, and I've got all this information listed on Holistic Minds, in certain parts of the country, like Texas, they actually have one to two milligrams of lithium in a daily serving of water that any person would drink. And when they did a study in these populations, they found that rates of psychosis, bipolar, mental illness is actually significantly less. Why? Because when you have lithium deficiency, Lithium is basically the mineral that helps activate the breaking system of the brain. It is critical for glutamate to get converted to GABA. It's critical for the accelerator to finally be let off and the brakes to actually start working. And I have probably at least 30 kids that I can think of off the top of my head where I gave them micro doses of lithium, one milligram, two milligrams, not 2,000. So a thousandth of the dose of what they give to the psychotic, micro doses of lithium, micro doses of magnesium, and we activated their breaking system. And just with that combination, for some kids, not all, for some kids, that was enough to suddenly allow them to actually be able to go into a playground. The kid that was withdrawn because it was too loud, it was too crazy, all of a sudden they're like, oh, I can go into the playground. And Johnny is now playing with the other kids. Mom can take Johnny to the restaurant and Johnny doesn't freak out because it's too loud. What did we do? We rebalanced part of their brain chemistry with just this tiny, simple combination. Again, there's a lot of other things to this picture, so don't think that lithium and magnesium fixes it for everyone. In a handful of kids where we got really lucky and that was their only issue, and you guys can try this at home, it's absolutely safe, 50 milligrams of magnesium, a milligram of lithium, which you guys can buy online, for some kids or adults can make a huge difference and actually rebalance the chemistry. Genetics is not destiny and we can change it with the right information. And that's what I want to give you. And what I need you to do is share this video and share our videos with people that need to hear this. Share it with parents whose kids are struggling. If you're an adult and you know of someone who's struggling and my focus is not even on adults, but you know what, if we can help more people, why not? Why not? So share this information, register, and access our website so you can get the free information to 
help you see all of the things we can do because we should stop normalizing suffering. We should stop calling suffering normal because we're in the 21st century and we can do something about it. And I want you to help me help as many people as possible. Thanks for listening. It's Dr. K from Holistic Minds.